Did the ancient druids believe in a veil of ignorance, Ajnana, Avidya, Maya, between the world and absolute reality or God? And what is up with the beginning of the genealogy of the gods having the cryptic names Tavern, Tat, Alvi, and Indvi? The Gaelic mythology indeed preserves a concept of a veil of ignorance between the manifest world and the absolute, Bryohan, Tat, Devav, very much like the metaphysics found in Indian religions. Alvi, meaning great ignorance, the equivalent of Agyana or Avidya, is son of Tat, meaning father, who is presumably the equivalent of God. And he is son of Tavern. This is a poetic term for ocean found in Old Irish glossaries. This Tavern or ocean is presumably equivalent to the cosmic ocean, because we can see that the genealogy of the gods concludes with Tavern. Therefore, it seems pretty clear that the sequence of Tavern being followed by Tat, Ocean being followed by the Father. This is a very simplified version of the beginning of a creation myth, the cosmic ocean giving rise to the Father. Inthwi, the son of Althwi, means the negation, that is in, of ignorance, that is Dwi. And Indwi is the son of this Aldwi. In this sequence, we then have the great veil of ignorance, Aldwi, emerging from the Absolute, or God, that is Tat, and immediately being followed by its own negation, Indwi, the negation of Dwi, ignorance, which is thus a newborn wisdom piercing the veil of darkness, the primordial intellectual sun rising. This is confirmed in a separate version of the same mythos found in the Ulster legends. We have Dwi, ignorance, who is foster son of Devav, meaning God, and son of Lugav, who is the Purusha form as we have previously discussed. And this Dwi, or ignorance, is killed and succeeded by Fachtna Fahach, son of Ross. Fachtna Fahach, Mach Ros, means the hostile wise one, son of knowledge. And Fahach comes from the same root word as the name Odin and numerous words for seer. Thus, once again, we have ignorance, Dwi, sired by the absolute, Devav slash Lugiv, and succeeded by its own negation, the wise one, Fachtna. On the one hand, we have Tat, father of Alvi, father of Indvi. And in the other version, we have Devad, father of Dwi, father of Fachtana. Now, Indvi is called the king of the north country and lord of horse breeding peoples. The horse has a solar and fiery meaning, and Fachtana is indeed grandson of Ruri. R-U-D-R-A-I-G-E, meaning the red, who must be the red sun called Rohita, meaning the red or red horse in the Vedas. Rohita is also included as one of the esoteric names of Rudra in the Sata Rudriya litany. That is, Rudra is directly identified with this red sun Rohita in the Vedas. Thus, Fachtana slash Indwi seems to be a highly solarized and primordial Rudra or Odin or Finn type, very much comparable to Apollo, sprung from the primordial, also Rudra-coded sun god, Ruri slash Rohita, who then defeats the darkness of the veil of ignorance with the light of wisdom and knowledge by killing Thui ignorance. The red, dawning intellectual sun, Ruri, 
is emanating the god of raging intellect, Fachtana, the hostile wise one. The latter appearing to be like a furious extension of the former, since they are both rudra coded and connected to illuminating wisdom. Rohita is also called the sage. As Indwi is the lord of the north, so he must be the god most consistently tied to the north in Indo-European myth, Rudra slash Apollo, here in a primordial and highly solarized form, as his lordship over horse breeding implies. It is thus hard to know if Indwi parallels Fachtana, his grandfather Ruri, or both considered as one, yet it is Fachtana who directly kills Dwi. That is, it is hard to know if we are meant to treat Ruri and Fachtana as two emanations of one original divinity, who is just called Indwi in the other version. From Indwi, all the other gods then follow, his first successor being Nate, that is, Vishnu. Likewise from Fachtana and his lover Ness, who is Vach, or speech, and her other consort Kavad, a Rudraic Brihaspati, the lord of speech, the other god heroes also follow, such as their son Konhovar, who is Prajapati, and their daughter's son Kuhalan, who is Vishnu. I should also mention that it is Shiva in his Nataraja and Dakshinamurti forms, who defeats and subdues the imp, who is the embodiment of ignorance by stepping on him. This defeating of ignorance is the Rudra-Shiva role. The Druids indeed had a metaphysics of the veil of ignorance that is born from the Absolute and then supplanted by the hostile god of solar wisdom. Whether we call it Agyana, Avidya, Maya, or Aldui. This veil is there in plain language right at the beginning of the mythic genealogies of the Gales. May this message of clarification find its way to those who will preserve it, that we may pierce the great veil. Quote, then, having made the hills stand up, Rohita spake to earth and said, In thee let everything be born what is and what is yet to be. This sacrifice, the first of all, the past, the present, had its birth. From that arose this universe, yea, all this world of brightness, brought by Rohita, the heavenly sage." Unquote. Atharva Veda 13.1 Now, although it seems quite clear to me that Aldui, meaning the great ignorance, is equivalent to Dui in the other version, meaning ignorance, great ignorance equating to ignorance in two different versions. This whole sequence still raises a lot of questions, including whether we should parallel Indui in the one version to Fachtana or to his grandfather or father, uh, Ruri or Ross. Or if we should consider this lineage between Ruri and Fachtana as the emanation of a single god of solar wisdom who is being emanated to defeat the ignorance. Now, obviously, the latter seems the most logical to me if it's true that Rohita is Ruri, the red, and that Rohita really is a name of Rudra. Then we clearly have a Rudra type primordial son in Ruri, uh, giving rise to knowledge, Ross, whose, whose son is then Fachtana Fahak, this extremely, extremely Rudraic name. And he then defeats uh, Dui, the ignorance, just as Shiva defeats the imp of ignorance in his Nataraja and Dakshinamurti forms. After that, Indwi fathers Nate, who is Vishnu, and in the other version, Fachtana and his lover and her other consort father a female, Dechtana, 
and it is Dechtena's son who is then Kuhalan, who is Vishnu. So we have a female in between the uh, generation of Fachtena and the birth of the Vishnu type. However, in the other version, it would be understandable for it to be only showing male descendants. And Dechtena not being present in that genealogy could be explained as a simplification, showing the line between Fachtena and Kuhalan as Indui to Nate. In the line between Fachtena and Kuhalan, Kuhalan is still the next male in that line, just as Nate is the next male after Indui. Other questions, of course, arise as well, such as where exactly should Lugiv be placed in the sequence? Where should the Purusha be placed? And the Purusha is sort of this containing totality figure. Interestingly enough, Lugiv is the father of the ignorance in the Ulster version. That is to say, even before the Aldui or Dui, we have the Purusha. In the version in the mythological cycle, we have only Tat, the father, before the ignorance. And it is only later, after Nate, after the Vishnu type, that Delvaith, who is Lugith, appears. So clearly, I think there was some flexibility and variance in how and when the Purusha form would appear in the genealogy. I think this is because the Purusha itself is the container, the, is the completion of the totality. The complete totality can be stated or born at the very beginning of the sequence of all the things that are within it, or at the very end as the completion of all the things that have built up to be it. Uh, in that sense, this movement uh, from the veil of ignorance, which is defeated by wisdom, and then the Vishnu type appears as the basis of the Purusha that is being formed. All of these are steps or layers within the formation of the final Purusha, who is Lugith Delvaith. Therefore, in the mythological version, that Delvaith Lugith appears at the end of the sequence as its completion or consummation. In the Ulster version, it appears at the beginning of the sequence, initiating this unfolding of layers that are all part of it, coming out of it. Nonetheless, I think it is logically explainable why the Lugith figure can appear at the beginning or the end of this sequence, when all of these are layers within the totality that Lugith is. In addition, within the Ulster legends, the name Lugith and different variants of Lugith appear at multiple different points, because the Purusha is the soul of the totality and is the container of the totality and has multiple different variants. The creation and sacrifice of the Purusha is a cyclical event that is happening at different points. Clearly, this became a complicated and difficult to organize issue within, especially within the, the Ulster legends, where there are so many variants of Lugith and he is popping up at different points. We shouldn't expect him to be in the exact same point as in the mythological version. These are, of course, different traditions coming from different parts of Ireland um, with different Druidic groups, and we should expect some slight differences. Nonetheless, the core of the myth is the same in both cases. We have the ignorance, Aldui or the we, defeated by its negation, which is wisdom, sagacity. The sage who is the red sun and his emanation in the hostile god of wisdom and knowledge. In both cases, the next male in this line after the wise god who negates the ignorance is the Vishnu type. The next male in that line. In one version, there is a female in between as the connector. But still, Kuholan is the next male after uh, Fachtna and Kavad. Therefore, we have the same core of this myth, with, with Lugith as the containing totality. We also have in the Ulster version, Dui, the ignorance, 
arising directly from Lugith, which is interesting because the great ignorance, or Maya, in Hindu philosophy is often equated with Prakriti. Prakriti is the counterpart of Purusha in these strains of Indian thought. And Lugith is the Purusha. So in that version, at least, we have directly connected the Purusha giving rise to the Prakriti. Lugith giving rise to Dwi, the ignorance. That is because the ignorance is Maya, which is this magical illusion that is created. And Prakriti is, that is what Prakriti is, is, is the material world, the feminine aspect, which is like this magical creation, um, which is also an illusion, a, a beautiful illusion. Um, and it is the counterpart of the centering soul, which is the Purusha, who is the encompassing totality and also the center point. Therefore, that could be another reason why Dwi is being born directly from Lugith, the Purusha. It connects this, this dyad of Purusha and Prakriti directly. The other interesting point is Fakhtana and his consort, Nes, and her other consort, Kavav. And I will go into this trio in another video. But suffice it to say that Kavav and Fakhtana are actually brothers in some versions of the genealogy. Fakhtana is the Rudra type, while Kavav is a Brihaspati type with a Rudra sort of coloring to him, while Ness is Vach, speech, the mother of knowledge, wisdom, and of the gods. And therefore we have two gods of illuminating wisdom, the Brihaspati and the Rudra type, as brothers here, both emanated from this Ruri, or the Red One, the, the uh, solar, the Red Sun, who is Rudra coded as well. And they are the source of all the other gods and of the, this moment of illumination that defeats the ignorance. It is coming from this trio of consorts with Vach, or speech, the goddess of wisdom, as its center point. So that is the moment of the explosion of light, of intellectual light, that fights back the darkness of the ignorance, and uh, then gives rise to the other gods. I should say also that in the next generation, after Kavad and Fakhtana, that is where we have Averyin. Averyin is as we can see in the Sons of Mill story, Averyin is actually Shiva. Averyin is the husband of the daughter of Ness, once again. So he appears in this next, this next step down in the, the genealogy of manifestation, a later manifestation. In some versions, Averyin is the son of a, a smith, the greatest smith in the world. Now we should know that the smith, this is another code name of one of the faces of Prajapati, the cosmic smith. He's the creator and cosmic smith. Therefore, this smith and Konkhovar are actually metaphysically the same, but they've been divided into two beings in this legend. And um, that is the father of this later form of Shiva. Now, Averyin, Shiva, he has many of the myths of the Odin that we know. He is the more direct parallel of the Odin of the world. This is a later manifestation. Fakhtana and uh, Ruri as well. These are higher manifestations of the higher solar principle on a higher level. When we see Odin, the son of Bor, that is the lower manifestation in the world. The final manifestation who, um, for example, in the Sons of Mill version, we have Averyin and Averfin dividing earth and sky, just like the division of, of Ymir. Averyin is the son of this, um, this smith, who is a Prajapati type, just as Rudra is the son of Prajapati via the step of his, his Manu or, um, or, or his seed. That intermediate step between Prajapati and Rudra can, be, can also drop out or, or be there, but nonetheless, this Averyin is Odin parallel we would be used to seeing. Whereas Fakhtana is a higher principle of illumination who is a, a more primordial Rudraic or Odinic manifestation. 
in other variants, Averyin is actually the is actually the grandson of um, Ross, the father of Fachtana. So he, in other variants, they have placed Averyin in the same line, the same lineage from uh, Ruri, the Rohita. This seems to reinforce that Averyin is a later manifestation along the same line that Fachtana is, but um, one generation, one or two generations lower down, um, coming directly out of uh, this original red sun of, of uh, sagacity. So this is how this seemingly different version of the creation can parallel, can be placed in parallel, can overlap with the Sons of Mill invasion creation myth that I have explained before. In the Ulster version especially, there are more details happening, more twists and more complications appearing. Some things seem to be slightly in a different order, However, it can be shown how these do in fact align and how the Ulster version is simply giving a few more details about the higher manifestations of this Rudra type and how he uh, brought the illumination to defeat the ignorance. At the end of the day, the three versions that I've discussed, the mythological cycle genealogy, the Ulster cycle genealogy, and the Sons of Mill story that is a creation myth, these all can be overlaid uh, into one narrative. However, there are so many things happening at the same time in the unfolding from the absolute in this creation that it is very difficult to tell it as a straightforward story in a single tale where all the parts are organized very clearly. Hence why in each separate tradition, a different lineage was fo focused on, a different uh, metaphysical line, different metaphysical details were made the focus. If you look at the Vedic version, however, all of these metaphysical principles and gods are part of the overall creation myth. And although their exact relation is sometimes vague and confusing, they are all there in one grand unfolding from the absolute. There's also a chance that Tat, or father, could instead indicate the primordial Dagda Dara, who is known as the great father, Alahar. This would align with Dara being son of Devad, and Vayu being the direct action of Brahman, his breath as wind. If Dara is considered as congealing into Lugiv, just as the prana wind congeals into the Purusha, then it's also possible that Tat would equal Dara and Lugiv treated as one. This would place Aldwi, the great ignorance, as son of Tat in alignment with Dwi as son of Lugiv and foster son of Dedav. The potential problem with this approach is that Dara is not said to be son of Ocean, as Tat is, but is himself directly son of Devad, God. Still, that could be a small variation between versions, or Tat could include Devad, Dara, and Lugiv as three aspects of the one primordial father god, the unmanifest absolute Devad, his expression as wind, Dagda Dara, and his congealing into the Purusha, Lugiv. The later birth of Delvaif Lugiv in the mythological genealogy would then be the rebirth of the Purusha Lugiv at the moment of its sacrifice to then create the world as we know it. As you can see, there are many ways the exact meaning and order of these names can be speculated on, yet the core mythos remains regardless. The mythic genealogy clearly has had to simplify the details of a more complex process. Thus, seemingly every genealogy originates in a variant of the creation myth. The mythological cycle, the Ulster cycle, and the Sons of Mill narrative.
there are still those who arrogantly proclaim that the Gaels had no creation myth. Meanwhile, right under their noses are at least three versions of the creation myth that they haven't even tried to understand. How exactly do they explain the fact that at the very beginning of the mythological genealogy of the gods, we have tavern, ocean, followed by tat, father, ocean giving rise to father. What exactly is this supposed to mean besides a simplified version of the beginning of a creation myth? My book, Taliesin's Map, The Comparative Guide to Celtic Mythology, is available from Amazon. Link in the description.